The stars of the Marvel Cinematic Universe go through a lot on screen, but some of their biggest battles seem to be waged while promoting the films. From dodging awkward underwear questions to being victims of all-out pranks, these are the most uncomfortable interviews with Marvel actors. Actors and actresses always seem to get a different line of questioning from the media. Though Scarlett Johansson tends to handle some stranger moments with patience and grace, she appeared to have had enough of one particular question during a press junket for The Avengers. When speaking with Extra, Johansson was asked, Were you able to wear undergarments? If You're you the, like the fifth person that's asked well, no, that because it, What is going on? <laughs> What? Then, to illuminate how strange the question is to ask, Johansson told the interviewer to ask if director Joss Whedon was wearing underwear. Was I wearing underwear? I mean, gosh, <laughs> ask Joss. I did. If I did. You ask asked Joss what kind of underwear he wears? In a later interview with Cosmo UK, Johansson seemingly referenced the infamous undies query, jokingly prodding her co star Mark Ruffalo about his skivvies. Or are you wearing underwear? No, tell us. Tell us. <laughs> I, well, how do you answer that question? Then the outlet decided to have some fun with this trend of weird, gender specific questions, flipping the script and asking Ruffalo some of the questions that women tend to get asked. He was a good sport about it. So, did you feel much pressure? to slim down, oh, get in shape, go on a diet, Mark? Not really. I, I uh... You made I a bunch think... of peanut butter, did some push-ups, yeah, right? Did... When Samuel L. Jackson and Brie Larson attended the Jonathan Ross show to promote Captain Marvel, they probably expected to talk about their new movie. Instead, they had to witness a long public explanation and apology from comedian Sean Walsh about his cheating scandal on Strictly Come Dancing. If you behave the way I did privately, you know, that's inexcusable enough, but for it to, to go so you know, public. According to The Sun, the Marvel actors were none too pleased about having to sit through the painfully awkward and very personal moment. Considering the fun they seemed to have together on other press junket interviews, it must have been extra painful for the two stars. My wrist, stop watching. My, my neck is fussy. My big deposits, my gloss is popping. You like my hair? Gee, thanks. Just bought it. While visiting Sway in the morning, Terence Howard was asked to explain what really went down behind the scenes in between Iron Man and Iron Man 2. After playing the role of James Rhodes in Iron Man, Howard was removed from the franchise and replaced by Don Cheadle for the second film. According to Howard, the studio approached him after the first film with a much lower offer for his return than was originally promised. We think the movie will be successful with or without you, so instead of the $8 million that we've, we've said we're going to pay you, we're going to let you come back for a million dollars. While this story is crazy, things take a weirder turn. But the best thing that happened as a result of it, uh -huh. I went and I finished, I got, went back to school, got my doctorate in chemical engineering, and now I have a company where we grow diamonds. Though impressive, some reports suggest this might not be the full truth. Reports say that Howard only received an honorary degree. By now, nearly every Marvel fan has heard of the Mark Ruffalo Infinity War spoiler on Good Morning America. The actor rocked the MCU and its fans with a nugget of information that gave away one of the biggest twists in the franchise. In the interview, Ruffalo looks to Don Cheadle for advice on how much he can say. Cheadle wisely advises against spoiling the end of Thor Ragnarok when asked about it. Can I say it? No. I would no. imagine. Can I just give him a little, a little taste? I wouldn't say too much, but you can say as much as you I mean, hey, it's your Let me just. Though Ruffalo escapes the Thor question relatively unscathed, he then drops a major spoiler for Infinity War. Wait till you see this next one. Everybody dies. Do, 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 do. do. Not everybody. No. Is that. Knowing how that one works out, we see that Ruffalo was very close to giving away the entire ending. When Ruffalo starts questioning how much trouble he's going to get into for his blunder, Cheadle has some good advice. Yeah, am I in trouble? A little. <laughs> Is Barry going to be mad at me? Dude, I don't. I just move on. I wouldn't try okay, to like no, that. No, during the press circuit for Avengers Endgame, there appeared to be a little competitive energy lingering between Chris Hemsworth and Brie Larson. During an interview with Entertainment Tonight, things got a bit bristly between the two, and fans have taken to dissecting the interview ever since. Is there any competition between the different 
sex, the different groups? Is There's there no competition for me because I'm the strongest, so it's just yeah. kind of like a different... Oh, well, you should let her think that. The one moment that stood out in the interview above all others came after Hemsworth joked that Larson did her own stunts like Tom Cruise. I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, and then... Tom, Tom Cruise, I mean? No, no. I'll be the first me, not the next Tom Cruise. Thank Ooh. you very much. Wow. Well. Comic conventions bring out all kinds of interesting people, and that can lead to some uncomfortable exchanges. That seems to be what went down during a Marvel panel at Ace Comic Con in 2018. With Tom Holland, Sebastian Stan, and Anthony Mackie on stage being interviewed by Kevin Smith, things were thrown to the crowd for a Q&A. For the last question, two fans came up, essentially to gush at Tom Holland and his dog Tessa. I didn't really have a question, it's just my friend Ruthie back there has some fan art of Tom and Tessa, and also... <laughs> when Stan asks who Tessa was, the fan snaps... Who's Tessa? His my dog! Th oh my gosh, educate yourself! Holland tried to smooth things over by telling the fans they were making him look bad, but it was too late. Stan made a quip about the girl spending too much time on the internet, and Mackie chimed in with his own comment. Oh, he's posting pictures of him and his dog? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's he's just hanging out at home with his Do dog? Do you follow Tom on Instagram? Baby, I'm an adult. Not every joke lands, and sometimes the jokester lands in hot water when a joke is made in poor taste. Celebrities have to be extra cautious about this, particularly during interviews. Jeremy Renner and Chris Evans found this out the hard way during a Digital Spy interview when they were asked what they thought of Natasha Romanoff's love life in the MCU. The interviewer reminds the actors that Johansson's character appeared to be interested in either or both of their characters, but eventually went with Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner. The two actors had a poor joke in response. She's a slut. <laughs> I was going to say something along that line. It's a complete horror. What a trick, man. Well, fans didn't love that kind of language or the idea that Johansson's character was being reduced in such a way, and they let the world know about it. Renner and Evans responded with a public apology. Evans said the joke was very juvenile and offensive, while Renner had a milder apology. I am sorry that this tasteless joke about a fictional character offended anyone. In 2015, while promoting Avengers Age of Ultron, Robert Downey Jr. sat down with Channel 4 News' Christian Guru Murthy. After talking about the character of Iron Man in general, the discussion veered into a very particular topic. What do you think of the obvious parallels being made between you and Iron Man? When Downey Jr. gave an answer regarding their minor similarities in the first Iron Man, Guru Murthy dug deeper. But he's becoming a much more likeable character as well, isn't he? I suppose A better so. man. Yeah, he's becoming a better guy. I, you know, in a way that you are as well, I suppose. When Downey Jr. neglected to give a full answer, the interviewer reframed the question, bringing up the actor's brief incarceration. At this mention, the smile fades from Downey's face and he starts to look off-camera toward his team. Guru Murthy then delved into the actor's political views, asking if he was a liberal or not. Downey Jr. tried to dodge the question by saying he doesn't identify as a specific type of political supporter. I'm certainly not going to backpedal on anything I've said, but I, would, I wouldn't say, actually I wouldn't say I'm a Republican or a liberal or a Democrat. Unwilling to pivot, the interviewer then tried to get in questions about the dark periods Downey Jr. went through, asking if he felt he was free of all that. That's when Downey Jr. seems to have had enough of the interview. Still something I'm sorry, I, I really don't. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Uh, uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. I mean. okay, that's okay. Bye. Thank you, guys. Are you... Everyone has a different idea of what celebrity means and what one should do with it. Brie Larson often uses her voice and her audience to speak about the issues that concern her, such as fair and balanced representation in the entertainment industry. However, it's not the same for everyone, which is what led to a bit of an uncomfortable moment in an NDTV interview with Larson and Jeremy Renner. When asked if their position comes with responsibility, Larson had a measured answer. I am committed to self-improvement and I work at being the best person that I can be and using this platform for as much good as I can, but it doesn't mean that I don't make mistakes. Her answer was well thought out and respectable. When it came to Renner's turn, however, he interpreted the question a little differently. I'm, I'm pretty accountable and responsible for my own life at, sure? at any rate, so yeah. um, celebrity is not something that I, I use as any sort of platform. 
Whether he meant it as a rebuke to Larson or Renner just didn't think his response through completely, it certainly made for an awkward soundbite as a follow-up answer. Paul Rudd has a knack for seizing an opportunity for laughs when he spots one. So, when his chair made a suspicious noise during an interview with Fandom Entertainment, he made sure to squeeze every piece of comedy out of it. Big things do come in small packages. Yes. Yay! Oh, it's a chair. It's the chair. It's leather. I'm sure. You just came back from lunch. I got it. The interviewer then asked what Rudd does in his suit that people don't know about. Um... I, I guess, uh, <laughs> not, you know, say I just do the same stuff that everybody else does. After a few more fart jokes had the interviewer and crew dying from laughter, Rudd asks a very good question. Should we see if we can do this whole interview with you even getting out one question? <laughs> Well, that's basically how it went. Whenever he was asked a question, Rudd would answer through the rhythm of chair farts, even adding in some facial expressions to really sell the performance. Captain America or Iron Man? <laughs> They're great, both of them. Great guys. Scarlett Johansson may get a lot of weird questions, but she doesn't get them all. Perhaps in an effort to catch the actors off guard, some interviewers ask about things no one really needs to know about. In competition for the strangest question of all, one interviewer decided to ask Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan and Winston Duke something personal. What did your costume smell like the last day of this shoot? Why ask that question? Stan's co-workers seemed to enjoy their co-star's discomfort. Hard line. He drew a hard line on that. No, the, question, the, the question is, what's your next question? When promoting a movie, actors are contractually obligated to participate in interviews, even the really excruciating ones. Knowing this, some internet personalities decided to prank Tom Holland when he was on a press run for Avengers Infinity War. Why are you pretending to be British for the interview? No, but I am... I <laughs> I am British. Holland was soon forced to clarify even further. I, I just do, I do an American accent when I play Spider-Man. How is that possible? <laughs> well, I just did it. From there, the interviewer challenges Holland's acting skills, confuses him with Tobey Maguire, and asks if he can lick his shoes. Should I lick your shoes? They look awfully clean. <laughs> My, you can, what, sorry? Remarkably, Holland keeps his composure throughout the awkward interview until the curtain is pulled back to reveal the prank. That was an odd experience, but fun. <laughs> that was fun, I enjoyed myself. Thanks for livening up my afternoon. Holland's response is a pretty effective way of putting the friendly in your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about awkward interviews are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.